So, the title for this video is certainly a bit clickbaity, I'll give you that. Yet it also seems to best fit my feelings for Chorus, and in this video, I'm going to tell you why that is. Chorus Then is a brand new space game that released very recently. It's been widely praised, received some pretty good reviews, and generally a lot of people seem to like it. Yet, I'm not one of them. In fact, I actively dislike the game to the point where I find it very difficult to play. Now, before you close the video and think I'm being all negative here and hatey, I generally, that's well, generally speaking, if I don't like a game, then I really don't feature it on this channel, as simple as that. However, Chorus has created a bit of a unique situation for me for two different reasons. Firstly, a lot of people on the channel have asked me to talk about it. Secondly, whilst I personally don't like it, Chorus is an objectively good game. So, here's the video, and it's a video that's proven somewhat difficult for me to tackle. Keep in mind that this isn't a review of the game. I won't be going in-depth on all of the game's mechanics. Instead of going into every aspect of Chorus then, I want to focus on the three fundamentals that make or break a space game. That's the flight model, the combat, and, if there is one, the story. Meanwhile, I'm fully aware that some people are going to view this video as me apologising for my feelings. Whilst the truth is actually far from that, I'm sure some people will believe that nonetheless. So for those of you that feel that way, here's the TLDR that, well, so that you don't have to watch the full video. Chorus is a game of a lot of unique qualities. It's a game that does many things right. It's actually a somewhat of a gem among current space games. Yet for me, personally, it presses all the wrong buttons. The longer version of that now follows. So Chorus may seem familiar to a lot of you who follow space games. Chances are those familiar feelings are invoked by this title's heritage. Coming from Fish Labs, now Deep Silver Fish Labs, the studio has some history with space games, in particular the Galaxy on Fire series. There is another game out there, another set of games actually, that have a well, that share the same heritage. Everspace and Everspace 2 are developed by Rockfish Games. Rockfish was founded in 2014 by Michael Sharda, who also happens to be the former CEO and founder of Fish Labs. So, whilst Michael moved on to a brand new company, he brought with him his signature style of space games. It's perfectly natural then that some comparisons will be drawn between Everspace 2 and Chorus, yet those comparisons exist only on the surface level. When it comes right down to it, they are both completely different games. However, throughout this video, I will be talking about both of them. So Chorus places you in the shoes of Nara. Nara is sad. She's sad because she blew up a planet and killed a billion people. You see, she didn't mean to do it. Well, I guess she did mean to do it, but she was conflicted and now regrets it. This then is how Chorus lost me right at the very start. Nara isn't evil. She isn't a bad person. She just killed a billion people, families and children included. She then fled from the life that drove her to that decision, leaving the evil power-hungry circle. Since then, she has built up a new life. It's not a bad story in principle, a cliche maybe, but certainly there are a number of other murdering child killers in fiction that sought redemption, perhaps the most famous of these being Anakin Skywalker. Yet, where Anakin and later Darth Vader had some depth, Nara really does not. And this leads me on to the second point that almost immediately pushed me entirely away from Chorus. To explain that though, I first need to talk about another game, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Hellblade, in my opinion, is one of the best games ever made. Not only is it great for many different facets of its gameplay, but it is truly great for how it delivers its story. The protagonist, Senua, is perhaps one of the most interesting and complex characters in all of gaming. Developers Ninja Theory took the unique approach of putting the player right inside Senua's mind. Everything she sees, feels and experiences throughout the game is conveyed with an impressive sense of depth. To all intents and purposes, Ninja Theory want the player to understand what it is like to be a Senua. And so, as you play, you hear Senua's thoughts, you feel her inner dialogue, and throughout the game, Senua's backstory is slowly revealed in a way that brings a player to fully identify with her. The story delivers hugely emotional impact by placing you in Senua's mind and in her shoes. Now, Chorus tries something similar. Throughout the game, you'll hear Nara's thoughts, a persistent whispering that interspaces other spoken dialogue. All dead. Time to board a circle ship. Okay, 
As she talks with her friends, enemies and other people, she will, from time to time, whisper her thoughts. The intent here is to underscore her feelings within any specific moment and to slowly reveal her backstory. This works immensely well with Hellblade because of the quality of writing and the quality of the acting. It's an approach that can work and has been being proven to work, but it's also one that 100% requires top-class writing and authentic acting. Chorus fouls on both those counts miserably. The cliché writing and the wooden dialogue turn what could be an amazing story into persistent irritating and stereotyped interruptions paced continuously throughout the game. Chorus's biggest failure then is without a doubt its story, it just gets in the way. Now let me be very clear here, I'm not for one moment suggesting that shallow story is always a problem when it comes to games. Plenty of games out there have shallow stories and it certainly doesn't break them. Everspace 2 also is fairly cliché ridden and doesn't exactly have the best acting. Yet it doesn't try to literally place you within the mind of its main protagonist. Chorus N would have been better served by allowing its story to unfold in a more traditional format. So yes, at this point I've spent a long time talking about the game's story rather than its gameplay. However, Fish Labs seem keen to emphasise that Chorus's story is all important. It's forced right down your throat, it's pushed front and centre, and that means it's unavoidable to discuss it. Unfortunately, that means most of the game is also designed around delivery of this story, and in my opinion, it not only hinders the game, but really does harm it. The story then is one part of the game which I'm not at all conflicted over, it's bad and gets in the way. Yeah, I know I've said that multiple times, but really, that's how strongly I feel about it. Moving on to gameplay, here is somewhat a different situation. This is a part of the game where I'm mostly conflicted. The gameplay itself isn't something I enjoy with Chorus, but that's not necessarily because it's bad. In fact, I really do feel objectively it's quite good. It's just a case that it really isn't for me. For anyone that has played Galaxy on Fire, there will be instantly a home with the game's combat and spaceship and the way that plays out, although Chorus has evolved upon that uh, many, many times and well, dramatically improved it. Controlling the ship from a third person, the player is able to fully navigate the very often pretty environments. The world itself is large and you are free to explore it to your heart's content. Navigating around, you will encounter various scenarios that can lead you to objective-based missions. The main story campaign, meanwhile, will constantly drive you forward to new technologies and upgraded abilities. Initially, the game will place you in a fairly weak ship. It's good enough to learn the basics. Eventually, though, Nara will retrieve the ship she left behind when she abandoned the circle. The ship with which she had used to destroy a planet. The vessel is known as Forsaken, a sentient ship capable of fully conversing with Nara. Forsa, as Nara calls the ship, has a great personality and a great voice. It's one of the best things about the game, in my opinion. Now, this all collectively leads me to my third big problem with the game. I really don't enjoy the flight model. The biggest failing to me is it's the inability to easily and freely strafe. At this point, I really have to talk about Everspace 2. A game following a similar structure to Chorus, but one which, to my mind at least, makes a far stronger case for a great contender for a space game. The flight model in Everspace 2 allows for full control of six degrees of freedom. It's responsive, fast, and very, very effective. This makes for fun and challenging flight, whether in deep space, flying over the surface of planets, or deep inside tunnels and caves. Chorus, meanwhile, removes full player agency over two of the axes, both the X-axis and the Z-axis are instead added as a technical capability of the ship itself. Hold down the right mouse button to drift on the X-axis, not too dissimilar to how you might drift in a car. Well, I guess it's a combination of drifting in a car whilst in a semi-Newtonian flight with some extreme limits placed upon it. Ultimately then, what this does is unlock some very clever gameplay that depends heavily upon mastering certain techniques of flight. This can create some punishingly challenging scenarios, both in terms of combat, but also in terms of resolving the various puzzles the game pits against you. Here then, is where I suspect my take on things will differ to a lot of people. I absolutely adore a challenge in any game, but I don't play space games for creatively tricky and unusual flight models. I'm more of a traditionalist when it comes to this aspect of space gaming. It's why here, I find myself comparing Everspace 2 to Chorus. For me, Everspace 2 wins out in both combat and its flight model, 
And that's not because it's easier. Anyone after all who has spent any time with Everspace 2 will tell you that combat is very, very punishing. But it's also extremely fun. And this because developers Rockfish have refined decades of experience and distilled that down into a very intuitive flight model. Chorus, on the other hand, attempts something new. The thing here is that on a technical level, what Chorus achieves certainly isn't bad. As I said, it's subjectively good. For me though, a Chorus's flight model turns me right off. Conversely, I suspect many people, at least those less traditional than me, would enjoy it immensely. So, that's as far as I'm able to go with my thoughts on Chorus. I've stuck to the fundamentals in this particular video because it's the fundamentals that make or break a space game. The combat, the flight model, and if there is one, also the story. Chorus has a unique take on all of these. For me, it kind of fouls on each, as for the reasons I've described throughout the video. But the strange thing is that Chorus is far, far from a bad game. It deserves a chance, and there's every possibility that you will like it. So, there we have it, some very mixed feelings and a very mixed take on Chorus. And that, of course, is why it's taken me so long to get this video out on this particular game. Anyway, I hope you'll find it somewhat interesting. Do let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments section below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys and girls next time.